I don't have to tell you all this, that COVID increases stress from all of these very important things. Being cooped up, having altered daily routines, the financial changes and pressures, having incredible social isolation, the fears of, for you as a caregiver about getting COVID, but also perhaps if you have a loved one with dementia, the fears about that person needing to be hospitalized for any reason but you not being able to be with them at the hospital. And are they going to be able to take care of themselves telling what's going on? There can be problems about uncertainty about the future. We all can be stressed by information overload with rumors and misinformation. There can be children now at home, lack of exercise, increased substance abuse, the fear of violence. And everything is indeed magnified right now. And there can be a sense that there's no place to go. And so it is a time now, more than ever, to work hard to improve communication, to work hard on the skills to minimize escalating anger, to reduce expectations, to work together to become care partners to learn and practice stress reduction techniques like you will soon. This is a time for hope. And I don't think there's any other couple um, that has demonstrated how to become care partners, how to work really, really hard together and to try to maintain hope for everyone than uh, Kim and Mike Adamley. And so Kim is going to um, be our next participant here along with Mike. Kim uh, is an educational consultant and family educator and coach. She's a school psychologist. And she trains graduate school psychology students. For 10 years, she was assistant professor, an assistant professor and also uh, directed the Center for Learning at National Lewis University where she was a family educator, facilitated parent groups and provided training to school psychology students. And indeed, she is the wife and care partner of former NFL player and broadcaster great, Mike Adamley, who is living with suspected CTE. And as you may have picked up earlier, today is Kim and Mike's 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> um, together with Mike, uh, Kim uh, founded and is now executive director of the Mike Adamley Project Rise Above, which is a program of the Concussion Legacy Foundation to provide patients and families living with symptoms of CTE with the tools, resources, a supportive community, and indeed hope. And so, Kim, Mike, Tell us about what's been going on for you during this COVID period. Hey, well, hi, Dr. Bob. It's so good to see you. And we're so happy to have everyone here and have this opportunity to, um, to talk and support one another. And happy anniversary, baby. <laughs> 25 years, we've been together 27 years, and we have been through it all. Everything that everybody's talked about um, in their journeys, we've been through. And the reason why we're so um, happy about 25th, besides obvious reasons, is because um, in our journey, we actually um, were divorced. When Mike's CTE really hit that, uh, uh, it really blew up and uh, it blew up our whole lives. And we feel really fortunate that um, we were able to get back together and rebuild our lives because we had lost everything. So happy anniversary, honey. Thanks for staying with me. <laughs> Um, so, um, gosh, so many things. This, uh, this COVID situation is, um, obviously, um, a new wrinkle in how we do things. We've, um, since Mike was told four years ago that he had probable CTE, uh, we have worked really hard, like you said. We put together 
you know, this whole lifestyle program for Mike. We found the best treaters. We found some great um, innovative therapies um, that, that are working well for him. And now with the, the quarantine, with COVID-19, obviously we're, we're stuck at home like a lot of people. Um, so no therapies for Mike. He can't see his friends. Unlike a lot of the people who suffer, um, like Jerry, who I, tends to isolate, Mike is the other end of the spectrum. He needs and thrives on social interaction. And without it, he, he withers. So obviously, we don't have that, um, at least not in person. Um, our other situation that is added to um, the hard times of this, of dealing with COVID and dealing with you know, Mike's needs and, and our roles and everything is that um, our son, Bradley, see my son from my first marriage, um, passed away unexpectedly March 8th. And I was, uh, you know, immediately went out to Salt Lake City uh, three, my, to be with um, his family there, three young children. Um, Shannon, your story really, really resonates with me today because um, it's very similar to um, what we've just gone through with Bradley and Bradley was 40 and um, I, I just got this it's his fingerprint today so I'll share that but um, so we was, when I got home from that week taking care of Bradley and everything um, his affairs it was right in the thick of now we're in isolation and um, and I am just emotionally, physically, in every way, depleted and empty, grieving. Um, there's no, um, loss of your child, no matter how old, is just devastating. Your heart is ripped out. And as a caregiver, Liz, you said this great. You live not only your life, but you're living the life of your partner. You have to, and Mike and I, we make a point of, of doing that. We are partners. I've never liked the term caregiver because it infers a hierarchy and better than it. And we, we feel strong that we're partners in everything that life throws at us. You know, we work, we find a way to work together. And, um, but in this situation now, I can't, I can't be that person. I can't do all those things. And, and I told Mike that, um, I, right away, I said, Mike, I am not going to be able, I don't have it to do all these things for you. You're going to have to have bowls of cereal. You're going to have to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You're going to have to sit at times when you want to do something because I can't be there to help you or to arrange something. And, um, and he was, he's, he's here for me. But the big lesson that I learned from this, it's like, uh, like Liz, you know, overachiever, I'm a perfectionist, you know, trying to do everything, um, do it perfect. But being in a situation where I had no choice, what I learned more than ever, and this is really important at this time with COVID-19, is that lower your expectations. In a time of crisis, in a time of hardship, you think that you have to gear up, you have to do more. You're on hyper alert, right? Hyper vigilant to, to get things done. But actually, in times like this, the opposite is true. Lower your expectations, nurture yourself, go slower. You know, think of it as like triage. So you think of uh, what absolutely needs to be done, uh, what can be put off or delayed. And then, you know, how can you s simplify or eliminate, or eliminate things? You don't have to be perfect. In fact, your goal should be good enough. Just be good enough. Kim, you know, I think people can be watching the two of you right now. And Mike, you're sitting there being talked about. But I've known you for a while, and I, I know how much of a partner in this you have been. And uh, how vocal you have been to let people know what you're going through. But I also know that sometimes it's hard to control. It's hard to, uh, to do as you're 
asked to do and to stop those emotions and to be able to figure things out. And so during this time, has it been working for the two of you? As, you know, you're trying to decrease, you know, lower the bar and the standards, Kim, and ask Mike to do things and try to, is it working? Um, for the most part. I, I like to talk about impulsivity and stupidity in this case. I was downstairs, somebody invited, I had to ask him a question about, um, we were missing some mail. And we, a lot of times people in another a part of the uh, big apartment, uh, you know, get their boxes mixed up. And so I, I went to the people door and, and um, asked if they had picked our box up by mistake. And before you know it, I was talking to six people in a room all by myself and 20 minutes went by and she came down. I felt about this big and I should have been because I, I can't, I, I was just, too stupid. You weren't too stupid. You were being. You were doing what, what just happened. He, he was caught up in the moment. He's a social guy, and they, they invited him in, and, and he went in, and I was like, Mike, he's an at-risk category for a number of reasons. Age, he's got a neurodegenerative disease, but he's also got a heart condition. So we worked hard at really being, you know, isolating, and, and we were like, we were in the clear, and then he goes into it. You know, I'm like, oh, Mike. So, you know, the consequence was he had to sleep in a separate room for a week. But anyhow, but we we lived through that. We lived through that. What else can you share with the viewers to um, perhaps help them through this time right now? You're in an, uh, you're in a, a the, the the most awful situation now that I can imagine having just lost your son and dealing with all of this. But you're able to continue to help people, which is remarkable to me. And I have so much respect for you doing that. So you what know, else? This, yeah, there's a couple of things. This was touched on earlier. Um, the concept of interdependence. You know, we are first and foremost, yeah, I, I take care of Mike, you know, I'm we share a brain, we like to say. But first and foremost, we are partners. We're husband and wife. This is my husband, my spouse. That relationship is, is the top priority. And, um, and in that, you know, in my time of need right now, guess what? This guy steps up. Maybe he's not able to in the same way that he used to in the past or would have. But you know what? He makes me a cup of tea. He rubs my feet. He pulls the bed down and he makes it in the morning. You know, he does all these little things or he just will hold my hand. All these little things he is giving to me. And I think that's important to remember, to look for the strengths, to look for the things that, that the one who's the victim of CTE, they still have things that you know, they're, they're still, this is still Mike, he can, and he can still um, he can still contribute meaningfully, and I and I appreciate and I and I try to tell him so much how much I appreciate um, what he does. And, and to be honest, okay, does he do everything perfect? No, you know things might be a little bit messy or whatever, but that's okay. And you know the sense of accomplishment and the sense of uh, feeling like you can contribute is so meaningful. Um, so you both are, are pretty incredible and I uh, cannot thank you enough for sharing uh, your story, especially at this absolutely difficult time in your life. Um, thank you both. Thank you.